th this little uh, uh, session this afternoon has come out of the the couple of questions over recent about um, uh, putting uh, brickwork on archways on viaducts um, both straight and skewed so I'm going to go through a couple of ways that I think it can be done um, but in going through it and using fusion I'm not going to be explaining how to draw the basic arch or the square or the circle I'm assuming that people can use fusion in the sense of drawing so I'm showing you the technique I got so I, I'm going to go through the drawings I've got on the timeline showing you the steps rather than showing you the actual drawing and as usual I'm not paying any attention to dimensions or sizes because I want to show you how I think it will work for you. Now that's an arch I've done and I'm going to show we've got the basic arch there and you can see how the brick the brickwork there is in, in the roof of it. It's a straight arch it's not one of the ones that we've discussed with Roger before from the point of view of the entrance and exit being on a skew is this is just you know parallel sides so let's go back on the timeline and see what we've got on it so the first thing i've done is just a, a, a basic arch for something to sort of something to to, to 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 work with okay now the next stage then is to create an offset plane let's put the planes on so we can see them and we have an offset plane down here which I've offset from the base and it's on that offset plane that we do a sketch and let's find the sketches the one of the reasons why I'm doing it this way is because rather than drawing it for real because once you start going to this level of patterning the CPU time is quite intensive and you get some lengthy weights so what we've done here is we've created a brick pattern on this offset plane now if I just go in and change direction a minute one of the key things with this is you have to make sure that the length of your pattern from there to there is equivalent or slightly more than the uh, surface area and the surface area is easily taken with your measure tool and clicking on there and you've got the length of that arc which is 47 millimeters in this case so you need to make sure that this is 47 millimeters or more otherwise it won't fill the arc and also as you can see the width of it the next stage is with the emboss tool and the, the emboss tool whoops is this, is this one here and if you've not put it on your toolbar yet you'll find it in the create one down there so with the emboss tool you you can then pick the sketch profile which is this one down here there and then you press select the faces and you just click on the face you want which is that inside one and then you click OK the effect you can have here is either emboss or deboss now it really is up to you basically if you deboss you end up putting the the mortar joints in if you emboss you put the brickwork in um, so I'll move on because that takes a while to do and we'll and you can see there after the emboss tool we've got the brickwork in the roof as we want it and then of course you can add brickwork down here you know you can put a rib in and add your own brickwork whatever brickwork around the side to create your archway etc but that's to get your basic brickwork in there if you noticed while we're in while we were in the emboss thing we'll just go back by the way in case you don't know if you want to go back to a feature the feature there if you right click on that feature and you can edit the feature and that will bring you back up in a moment shouldn't have done that because it takes ages <laughs> and then you can edit the feature so you can adjust the amount of there I've done a 0.5 millimeter thickness um, how deep you have your bricks and the size of your bricks will also will depend on whether you're doing N gauge, double O gauge, O gauge 
and the quality of your printer. Are there any questions at the moment? Yes, could you go through that one more time? A yes. Little quick for me. I want to make sure I've got this down. I will be, yeah, I will do. So if we go back, let me go back to that stage there. The idea when you're embossing something, you need your sketch on a plane of its own. And you, it's nice to have that plane in line with where you want to project that image, if you like. So I created an offset plane here, this yellow one, offset from there. It doesn't matter the distance, as long as it's a way away that you can get at things. Then on this plane, there we draw our pattern. Now again, on that one, I just, all I did for this was to draw one brick, then the other brick, and then highlight both those bricks. And with the Create Pattern tool, the uh, rectangular pattern, I just created the number of bricks I wanted going both ways and up and down, okay? Once you've got that pattern, and it can be any shape you like, of course, you know, this technique of embossing will apply with any shape, any pattern. The fact that we're using brickwork, we're using brickwork. So when you've got that, get yourself back in a position where you can see both of them, and then you highlight that pattern, select the emboss tool, and you can see we've selected one there, which contains 154 patterns in there, and then click on the face one and select the face you want to put it on. Now in our case, it's that one. We would click on that and then decide whether we want to emboss it or deboss it, and that will give us that result there. Okay, um, who was it? Uh, where's he gone? Uh, Bill. Did, uh, is, that, is, that under, is that clear, Bill? Yes, I've, I've been making copious notes, so I think I can. It's good timing for me. I'm getting ready to do one of these. So Now, I should add that should you make it too big, that's not an issue. Let's suppose the brickwork had come down here a bit. Then all, all you basically would do then is sort of, you know, highlight the bricks you don't want. Whoops. And then just use the extrude tool to bang them back to there. So you can get rid of it. So don't worry about jagged edges in that sense. And the same if you overhang over this side a bit. It doesn't matter because you can extrude them back and then put your, your facing stones on as well. The main thing is, is that you're covering your archway from the start of the arch to the finish of the arch. Okay? Wow. That's cool. Right. So that's the straight one. Now I'm going to go on well, to the... Can I come in quickly, Russ? Go on. Uh, when you went to, to the edit that, uh, and we showed the emboss, it came up with faces selected two. What was the other face? Hang on a minute. Let me go back again to it. Um... He's gone on a go slow again. <laughs> no, it's gone really slow. There it is. Right. What you mean there? Oh, there. Yeah. Well, yes. It, because I I selected that one as well, basically, and it it doesn't matter because my pattern. Ah, right. There. Um. Sometimes when you select this one, it depends how you've drawn the arch. If you've drawn the arch such that the arch is self-contained then it will only pick up the one. But if you've drawn it in one piece, then it could pick up this one as well. Now, the only other tip on this one, just to, which, which, which you may have seen, is when I'm drawing this sketch, I ensure that I draw it in that mode, because now I can see the width of the arch underneath. And therefore, all I've got to do is make it wide. Now. One trip, one little tip, which I fell foul on. When I started this, I drew a rectangle around here, the size that I wanted the pattern. The width being equal to the circumference of the arch, and the width that way. And I forgot to take that rectangle away after I drew all my bricks. So when I projected the pattern onto the arch, I just got, it was just solid. 
because of course it was bounded by a rectangle which the extrude treated as a as a solid so don't make if you do use a rectangle use a construction line or take it away afterwards okay so, so Russ, yeah. uh, one more question yeah. so if this pattern grouping that you made was wider could you then pick three faces and wrap the whole thing at once it, it well don't, well yes of course it could the, the the i mean the reason i've not done it is because all the viaducts and arches i've looked at along this line here there's always been a ridge of some description right okay and also when we go on to the next two examples you'll see that the shape of the bricks in the arch would not match the shape of the bricks on this wall anyway but if you wanted that pattern all the way round, then certainly what you would have to do is make the width of this sketch here equal to that entire circumference. Got it. Thank you. Okay. Right. Going on now to the curved, uh, what I call the curved brick, as it were, which is the other way round. So you can see there, look, now, now we're going the way which I think most arches end up being built or rather a few that I've seen now exactly the same technique no difference at all the only difference is of course when we get there is the bricks are the other way other than that it's the same technique now if you end up with half bricks in here then that's not a problem because you could you can go on to there, for example, and let's just put in a very quick uh, fillet, if you like, or whatever. So we'll, we'll, we'll say that that's, that's a lintel we, we, we put in, and then you can just extrude that lintel out and cover those bricks up. And I'm not going to go into those details because that's, that's basic drawing. Um, because each of these bricks are individual. So, you know, you can you know, you, you can take out individual bricks if you want to then. I don't know why you'd want to do that, but you can do. So you've got, you've got total control of it, all right? So that's going the other way. Same technique. The only difference is that the, 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 brick, the bricks have been drawn left to right rather than up down right now we'll go on to one which is a bit different and this is one where um we've got the bricks on an angle uh which is going to be that one so you can see the slight difference now on this one same same technique exactly where's our sketches to put the sketches on right The only difference is now, look, the bricks are drawn on angle. You project them onto the roof of the arch in exactly the same way with the emboss command, but you've got to draw the bricks on the angle. Now, you need to make sure you've got enough to cover. If you have too many, it doesn't matter because there's too many here, but they won't be projected because there's nothing to project them onto. So you end up with an arch that looks like that. Now, when I did this one, these bricks came down here. So all I did was to highlight this face and just with the extrude tool, push the overlapping bricks out of the way. And then tidied up the front with a bit of a, a, a brickwork on the front. Can you show how to put that facing brick, brick arch on, on the front? Is there if you make a strip and then what that one? Method. Yeah, that the arch itself. Oh, no, the that's space. A, that's the easiest of all. You just draw a brick, and then you take your center line down here, and you just create a a circular pattern. Um, let's see if I can find it for you. I think it's that one, isn't it? It's that one there. Look. So you just got the one brick there, and then you just use a pattern to pattern it round the archway. So the center point, you can't see the center point on you. There you go. The center point is there. So all you do is highlight that, that one that you want and then just move it around. 
a, space, a basic pattern really you so you let all right let's 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 undo that pattern then is probably better is it to show you what we mean um let's take it down to one right so there's our single brick which we highlight we go into the pattern tool we do a circular pattern we've already chosen the object now we choose the axis which we're going to go down there get at the axis a minute where am i one and then we want to start putting the the, the, the bricks in the, 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 that we want to put in there and then and then you just go from there is that under is that all right bill yes yes i'm just learning fusion 360 yeah, so oh, oh fed coming yeah which it's purely on the pattern tool and picking the circular pattern and that allows you then to create a circle pattern i either in a circle part of a circle and as many as you want in in spacing and so forth okay wow. thank you that's now, terrific I'll, I'll be the only one to what uh, one more arch to address now and that's the one where we've got a skew where the this face is offset to the other one uh which i think is there no hang on which but wait, wait, i got it here yes is that is that one i'm going to go on because if you look at that now that's one which is offset so you can see the front and the back are offset if we if we look at the bottom of them you can see there where they're offset now if you do it in the same technique you'll end up with them out of a line at the top see you can't do it on a skew and the best the easiest way of explaining that to you is to go back to this one which is a chimney that's been put on it you know, the bricks on a tapered chimney and if you look at it when you wrap any a band of ribbon around a taper it will not join up with itself when you've gone right round. It winds itself up the taper. And you can see this here by the gap between there and there compared with in the middle. You can't wind a strip round a tapered cylinder and have both ends meet. And that's the problem with the skewed arch, as it were. And you can, you can see it there. And of course, you could sit down and you can calculate and you can say right okay if i build this uh, brickwork on an angle template uh, you can make it work but the problem there is it's difficult because if you say i'll set the brickwork on an angle of five degrees and it works it won't necessarily work for an arch that's slightly different size because the calculation will be different for each arch and the size of the arch so it gets involved so looking at a different way is where's it gone there so there's our basic arch again okay and it's a straight arch now what i want to do is skew it which i think was what roger was doing with one of his arches so what i'm going to do there is to go back in now and i'm going to go on the top and this time I'm going to do a sketch. I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to highlight that and I'm going to angle it. And we'll angle it, say, five degrees, uh, minus five degrees. Okay. Then I'm going to do a sketch on there. And my sketch on there is quite simply going to be one, one. Oops, hang on a minute. Sit comfortable. Two triangles and finish the sketch. Let's put the sketch on so we can see it. And I'm going to highlight them and extrude them and take them straight down to the bottom. And okay and then get rid of the sketches so we got them there go back then to our top one 
go back to there onto there move it back our five degrees again and there we have our skewed arch with our brickwork on it brickworks on it and the arch is skewed that's an easy way of doing the skewed roof if you want to do it that way so russ um, a question about patterns so you showed picking a few bricks and then extending the pattern and it filled automatically and repeated it yeah what about a uh, random stone or tile I'm can you cut, cut a I'm section coming. of that and extend the pattern and i'm coming on to that next Sorry about that. that. That's fine. I was just thinking random stones like the stones you've got embedded with the bricks, but this will be fine. This is right. well, plenty random. Yeah, you can, I mean, say, what, what I show you now, you can use for almost anything if you like. Uh -huh. um, I don't know. I, I'll try and hold this up. Is that, where's my camera gone? You can't really see it, can you? I, I printed one out on the, on the filament printer uh oh oh gauge and it it looks fine um and this is the one that i used uh to do uh the only thing on this particular model i've actually got them a little bit too 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 deep um and i i'll probably reduce the amount of uh of, of mortar lines so how do we do that well we did that the same way uh because if we go into and put our sketches on and find it uh let's see where we are with the sketches a minute there you are there's my sketch there so again exactly the same highlight the sketch and with the emboss tool emboss it on the wall the window was put in afterwards um i i don't bother um whenever i'm doing walls i will do the wall that i want and produce that wall and then i will add doors and windows afterwards um it's much easier to, than cutting round doors and windows with with your graphic so you want a bit more detail of this. First of all, let me just show you one of the other things on here. Uh, get that one out the way. Is that the one there? And go on to this one. The this is oh hang on. We'll get there in a minute. Let's go on a right. Okay. Now this particular one is, I'll tell you now when I find my ruler. This particular one is 60 by 30. Now one of the advantages of this one is that this side, the left hand side, matches the right hand side perfectly. And the top matches the bottom perfectly. So if I create another one of these and join it on the right hand side, it matches because where you've got the brick shirt cut off, they line up on that side, just like wallpaper. So you can create as many of these panels as you like and stick them together and it'll be one continuous wall albeit you will see a repeating pattern but you won't see the repeating pattern that much because it's, it's a random pattern any pattern anyway so the next question that bill will have is how did i draw the sketch is that right bill uh, yeah with a full random pattern uh because you've got it so that the right end matches the left the left, right side matches the left side and I'm thinking of getting an image of random stone, cutting a piece out of that and extending it. You can do that as well. I did not draw that stonework. I drew, that's an image, which I think answers your question in the beginning of how you do an image. I shall briefly explain. That image was taken from the internet uh, on Pinterest or Pin Interest, whatever that site is called, and you search for textured, you will find no end of textured stonework images. So what we do is we get that image and you can do one of two things. You can either put it in a graphics package if your graphics package can do it, or you can do it with an online package and you convert that image to an SVG file. And then when you've got an SVG file, you can import it in. So we'll have a look at that. 
I'll go to a fresh one and we're going to do a sketch and on the import in it's on insert insert SVG and we'll find it so let's see which one here the stone wall I think that's the one or might be that I can't remember which one it is now might be that one no it's not that one it must be that one and you've got this don't what and you press OK and in it goes and then you can scale it whoops no it wasn't that one <laughs> okay. I had some that didn't work because I was messing about with it let's see if I can find which one it was uh, insert SVG uh, da, da, da. which is the latest one 851 it must be that one there no perhaps it was that one was it Uh, 826848 that must have been that one oh there we go so you've imported it and now you can scale it to whatever you want and that then that then becomes your template so what we can do now is we, we want to do a sketch so let's let's highlight let's 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 do an offset a minute so we can get it on there offset plane and we'll do that there just means so we can draw on so we're going to draw on there <laughs> draw on there whatever you want to draw on there let's give it a bit of depth And then basically what you're doing then is using the emboss command to highlight that select the face there and it'll take a while because of the computing thing and then you emboss it now you can do this with any shape you like now the reason why that's come out is because i've highlighted everything and therefore you'll get you've had highlighted a lot and I, I i shouldn't have highlighted all of it um and this if you remember is this is how we did the AA box, which is one of the first ones I showed you with the AA badge. Um, some, not all SVGs will go in. It depends on how the SVG has been handled by the conversion program. Um, DXF will also work, uh, and that becomes your template, and you can use anything you like on it. Questions? Just one on the obviously you I don't you've got the original one. Could you then somehow individually pull some of them stones slightly out a fraction? Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll, uh, you mean on a rough one? On a, a rough one, yeah. Well, well, yes, because let's 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 just let's get rid of these sketches so we can see what we're doing. So if we were to highlight that one, say and that one, and that one, and that one, and then use that, and then yeah, you go put and cut join did i pull them out i, I didn't pull them out then <laughs> went, went too far you can put yeah to your heart's content john yeah yeah that, that's that's all run because i say it's quick you know it, i know you're all used to using the svg yeah. the packages it's an individual one then in in fact when i put this wall up and i wanted to draw my window i actually just you know click the stone and drew from there but it's a lot easier i find it's a lot easier doing it by adding doors and windows afterwards i do the same thing with 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 brickwork as well um i add them afterwards and i've got to the stage now where i've moved one stage further is i don't actually now I no longer, uh, oh, this is on brickwork, I've just finished doing a brewery and I printed the walls without windows and just a hole there and printed the windows separately. Now that, that's, that does two things for me. I found that printing brickwork, whatever sort of brickwork it is, is better on the filament printer 
because it gives a rougher finish than the resin one does. Mm -hmm. um, but what I found is that I can print windows very successfully on the filament one in a high quality mold, as it were. Now, if I choose the slow speed for the quality of windows, it takes ages printing brickwork. So I therefore decided I will do the walls and the windows separate. And that allows me to do the windows at high quality and the walls at normal quality, thus saving time and everything else, and then just pop the windows in it. It also means I can paint the windows properly, I can paint the walls properly, and then just click the two together. It makes painting easier, makes printing easier. It's not always good to try and print all in one go.